What's up SC Nation, welcome back to another video. This is a different kind of video. I'm using my trusty whiteboard. This is a rocket book whiteboard. It's a good whiteboard. Um, this is going to be a different kind of video. Oh, Mary, we just dropped the pen. Alright, this is going to be a different kind of video. I really don't have much time to edit. I'll be using my whiteboard instead of uh, visuals and we're going to be talking about speeding up the sales cycle. Sales engineers are not really known for speeding up the sales cycle. They're usually just part of it and they might be considered as if they have no influence. But sales engineers actually have a lot of influence over the sales cycle. We have ways to speed up, win deals, lose deals, and this is what we're going to talk about right now. So let's think about the sales cycle. Generally speaking, I need to clean my whiteboard a little bit better, but hey. So you have a lead coming in and then someone qualifies it in theory. And by the way, I'm bad at spelling. So if you see any typos, let me know. Someone's qualifying the deal. Now, this is usually an SDR, BDR, uh, DR, but in my experience, a lot of times they just, the SDR and BDR, they just set up an appointment for the account manager. Now, something else that I've seen is that the account manager would invite the SE on this call. Technically speaking, the account manager should be doing the qualification. But if they don't and you get invited, then you're part of the qualification. Congratulations. One way we can speed up the sales cycle is getting to know faster. And, you know, we go from lead qualify to closed. So, that's where an SE can speed up the sales cycle. That's not, generally speaking, what people think about when they say speed up the sales cycle. They're thinking, how do we speed up and get to a win? But the benefits of this is that you get to move on. You don't have to worry about this specific opportunity. How do we do that? Uh, sometimes there might be, the AM might qualify it, and maybe they did a good job, maybe they did a bad job. But then you the SE comes in, and be part of discovery call. Again, that's very dependent on the organization you work with. Sometimes SEs are not involved. That's why I think SEs should be involved because they can get to know faster. And one of the goals that SEs have and salespeople have is to get to know. And here we're looking for basically a technical fit. They have a problem, a business problem, technical problem, whatever it is. We wanna make sure that it fits. So if it fits, Great, we can move on. If it doesn't, then close. That's it, we're done, moving on. Now, how can we do that? The SE here should know what problems they're solving or their product solves. SEs, basically you need to know your products very well. Not only knowing like the speeds and feeds, the features that they have as part of the product, knowing what problems we solve knowing the budget or knowing at least how much they would cost is very beneficial because I've been in opportunities where, you know, we've talked about this before. SEs come in, customer wants a million dollar solution, they have a 5k budget. So we go to close or the customer has a reasonable budget, but not for everything they're asking for. Then the SE has to figure out how to fit uh, maybe a partial solution or maybe a full solution just using something different. And that's, and if we don't, can't do any of those, we go to close. So, and the SE has a big part uh, of discovery. Now, and we're erasing this. Let's go to discovery. Let's assume there is a good fit. The, a, uh, the AE did a good job qualifying the opportunity. And now we're doing a, a good uh, discovery call. So SE is part of discovery. Again, asking the right questions, discovery. Asking the right questions, knowing the products, the problems that your products solve, and knowing how to convince the customer to move on to the next stage. Now, some people like to put demo as part of discovery or part of qualification. Uh, Consensus has the concept of a demo qualified lead. So, but that's a very hardware tour generalized demo that's not actually solving a problem. It's more of a here see our product. The next step of the sales cycle is selling. 
So in selling, actually, it has multiple steps. You have, you could do the demo. There could be a proof of concept. And we could be talking about proposals. So when we're doing the demo, if you did a proper discovery and you know exactly what the what is the problem that they're trying to solve, you can do a customized demo. And this is where I see most people fail in terms of speeding up the sales cycle. A lot of times, SEs are not involved in the discovery process, so they come in and do a demo. And it's not customized because they either got the incorrect information, incomplete information, or no information at all from the salespeople. Just show me the product, just do the demo. So they don't end up doing a customized demo, they do a generalized demo. At which point, so if they do a generalized demo, so here, bad, generalized demo, generalized demo plus discovery. So the SE will have to do another discovery during a demo. At which point you may have already lost the deal because a lot of customers don't want to jump through hoops and do multiple demos or do multiple meetings. They want, they want to speed up the sales cycle as much as possible. They want to make a decision. They have other work to do. Their job is not to do to attend demos. Their job is to get their work done. They have to attend demos as part of their work, but it's not their complete work. So the faster you can do this, the faster you can close the deal. So this is bad because then after this, you might get into a set up another call and you get into a customized demo. So this is. So you've already done, here, let, let's do a meeting counter. Meeting counter. So you already had a qualification call, a discovery call, so that's two. The first demo call, that's three. The second demo call, that's four. Now, if you were to be a, here, bad, meeting counter and let's say good meeting counter so if you're doing a good me a good thing and SEs were part of the discovery process they understood exactly what the problem is now we can show customized demo from the get-go right so now you have the Qualification call, discovery call, demo. If you do a proper customized demo and you're sharing the right stories that are important for the customer, you could get to a sale. It's possible. It's not, generally speaking, done often unless you have a very well-known product, you have a, a simple product, not very complicated, and customers trust you, you don't need to do a proof of concept. In most cases, you end up going to a proof of concept. So if you do, go to a proof of concept, let's go like worst case scenario, you just no plan. Just provide the product, licenses or whatever. Like if there's a physical product or just licenses, provide the licenses and then let them kick the tire. That just ends up going into feature creep, going, going into like n no one actually doing the work to actually do the testing or to play around with it. There's no incentive for them to actually work on the product because now it's not planned. And when you don't plan, the urgent tends to take at the time of the important. But if you're doing it well, you have a POC plan. So you have one meeting for a POC plan where you come up with success criteria. We're going to be talking about POC plans later. We can have another video. 
but you create success criteria, you create milestones, go no go uh, <coughs> action, and you move on from there. So you did add a meeting here. So now you have the same amount, but now instead of going like two months, here, here you go. Here's a license for one month when you're doing the bad, bad way. Here's a license for one month. Oh, nobody touched it for one month. Here's another license for another month. Or here, here's a license for 14 days. Let's get to it. Let's get working. We know exactly who we're working with, what the tests are going to be, and we can move on. <coughs> so there's that. And that, that is where a lot of time is wasted when it comes to closing this, uh, this, this sale. It just prolongs the sales cycle by so much. Which is why right now there are software being built to address this current issue. There's Proverity, Success, uh, Vivin just released. They had a big announcement, they released something called Eval. I'm assuming it's for that. <clears throat> if you hear kids running, well, I have kids, so I apologize in advance. Not right now, I'm in a call. The life of working from home. <coughs> Alright. And then we go into proposal. That's something that SEs work on with salespeople. That could be part of the negotiation process as well. But here, if let's let's actually erase it from here. But at this point, we get to a technical close. And here, we may never get to a technical close. Hey, I'm not going to write it all. But that's the difference between the two. So, same amount of meaning, but this could take 60 days. If planned well, this could take 15 to 30 days. That's how NSE can affect the sales cycle. And a lot of times I get struggle, yeah. I, I struggle with against other salespeople where they just want to give the product. Hey, let them play with it. <clears throat> and I've done that in the past where here you go, play with it. And it never ends up being a good thing. It, it, I don't have good experience with this way of doing things. Having a POC plan, even if it's a basic POC plan, POC plan of these are the tests that we're going to run. It could lead to higher success. And if nothing else, it could lead you to close the deal as a lost deal faster mainly because you know exactly what you're going to test and if it works or it doesn't work so instead of struggling for 60 days or 30 days to see that it doesn't work and you're wasting everybody's time now you close it in 15 days move on to the next deal or understand what features were required that you lost the deal provide that information to to product management whereas with this you may never find out what what cost you to lose the deal and then if you show value through all this of your product, the negotiation part. So we have discovery, selling, and then you have negotiation and close. And this changes from book to book or whatever. Yeah, this is not needed right now. Negotiation and close. If you did a good job showing value here, negotiation is much, much easier and you can close the deal faster here. That's it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you like this format of videos. <coughs> not edited, raw, kids running around. Let me know if you like it and I'll do more of these. If you don't like it, let me know that you don't like it and I'll do less of these or none at all. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.